In one of my more popular recent videos, I did a collaboration with Christian Gadfly, and we talked about the Church of England and people within it who said Jesus was trans. Well, things haven't gotten any better. The Church of England's first non-binary vicar said it was difficult when they came out to their wife and three children after having a moment of revelation while reading the story of Adam and Eve. Get this. Bingo Allison, 36, who defines as genderqueer and uses the pronouns they, them, experienced an epiphany seven years ago while reading Genesis 1-3 to in the Old Testament. Bingo, who previously trained to become a priest in Durham, said the Church of England was open to me coming out, but added that it was difficult for some people they had worked with because, for them, I was the first transgender person they had worked with closely. Two things here. If you're transgender, you can't also be non-binary because to be transgender acknowledges male and female, which is a binary. And second, this person trained in Durham in England, but in Durham, North Carolina, there's a place called Duke University, and Duke University has the Duke Divinity School, and within the Duke Divinity School, there's a program called Duke Divinity Pride. I made a video previously on that, but these people say pretty much the same thing here. They have a lot of uh, very liberal uh, exegesis from the Bible, so something really fishy is going on with places called Durham. They have since moved to the Liverpool Diocese of the Church, which does so much to support and empower LGBT people, and they have found their new congregation wonderful. Specifically, Bingo was ordained at the parish church of St. Margaret of Antioch. This is part of the Liverpool Diocese. St. Margaret's legend tells of her being swallowed by Satan whose stomach expelled her. That has nothing to do with this story. However, the part that does have something to do with this story is that St. Margaret was apparently born both she was both born a virgin and she was the patron saint of expectant mothers. So in a church venerating a saintly woman who is the patron saint of expectant mothers, you have a non-binary priest? How is this supposed to work? Talking about how it has received them, Bingo added, on the outside you might think, oh, they're quite a traditional church, so they might have traditional views, but I've always been treated as a person and as a priest. Do traditional church values de-person people? Bingo is now vocal about gender issues and uses social media to spread their message, including posting selfies with captions saying, Jesus loves sparkly eyeshadow. Okay. And? Here's the most important part of this. My views used to be very traditional and very conservative, certainly. Some might call them bigoted, and there was a lot of ignorance and a lot of othering, they said. They explained how the language which the Bible originally used in Genesis 127 spoke about from maleness to femaleness as opposed to men and women. They don't actually explain how they came to that conclusion, they just said that they did. So Genesis mentions from maleness to femaleness, does it? Well, let's see what the verse actually says. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. If you want to talk interpretation... Well, it's best to go to the original language, so let's look at the Hebrew. Strong's Hebrew has the translated words for man and woman clearly defined in this verse. In the Hebrew, in this verse, there's no word for from, and both those words are nouns, so this has nothing to do with a spectrum from maleness to femaleness. The Daily Mail did a piece on this, but so did a lot of other websites. Here's the mirror. One of the things that has kept with my ministry ever since is that transition and coming out can and should be a spiritual experience, as well as an emotional and social and sometimes physical one. There is something beautiful about growing into who we were created to be and growing into our authentic selves. This is a perfect example of a disconnect that we have in the modern church and really in society overall. People don't look for authority anymore, they look for authenticity. To explain it better than I ever could, here's Dr. Jay Morrow. There's a massive seismic shift that's occurred from a culture of authority to a culture of authenticity. Mm. And so what's happened is used to be that um, authority was out there externally. Institutions, uh, parents, teachers, God, Bible, something outside of tradition, something outside of myself that I conform to. The shift that's occurred is the locus of authority or the place of authority has shifted to authenticity of the individual. The only way that I can be authentic is to be able to express how I'm feeling at any given time. And anything that challenges my expression coming from the inside out is deemed oppressive. 
If there's nothing else you take from this video, I hope that you take this. When people search for authenticity instead of authority, they're searching for happiness instead of truth. Instead of saying, I don't really know everything, so I'm gonna search for truth outside of myself, people say, the truth is involved in being my authentic self. So anything that's outside of me that doesn't agree with that, I'm gonna cast out. If you come across somebody who says authenticity is the source of all truth, it's pretty much the same thing as saying there is no truth or that all truth is subjective. I ask that you turn that claim on itself and ask them, well, is that true? Is that just true for you or is it true for me as well? Doesn't it seem strange that Bingo talks about authenticity as the source of truth, but then turns to the Bible as an authoritative source saying that this, based on this Bible verse, is how I'm going to lead my life? The history of biblical interpretation is littered with the opinions of rich, white, straight, cisgender, able-bodied, neurotypical men, assuming that everyone in the passages they had read thought and perceived the world just like them. I would like to ask, which part of that description disqualifies someone from interpreting the Bible correctly? Is it the fact that they would be straight, white, rich, male? Because it seems that bingo is white, certainly male, rich compared to a lot of other people, and at least able-bodied, able to walk around. So which of those is disqualifying? What's the criteria for being able to interpret the Bible correctly? The truth is that anybody can interpret the Bible, but interpreting it correctly has nothing to do with what your physical makeup is. It's about how you read the original languages. Unsurprisingly, your finances, your skin tone, your sex, they don't determine whether you're right or wrong about something. We search for truth outside of ourselves, not inside of ourselves. But can you see how this fixation on authenticity causes someone to actually other people by saying that their interpretations are wrong because they were rich, white, able-bodied, neurotypical, whatever? Do you see how this is kind of like a cancer that eats away at someone's thoughts? There's nothing wrong with having inner thoughts. Certainly our inner thoughts can be correct, but they're not correct because they come from inside. They're correct when they align with the truths that come from outside ourselves. Like I said earlier, there's another video I have about the Church of England saying that Jesus was trans. You can see that video here. I'll see you next time.